Welcome. Let's review our coverage of CPP analysis by working some extra problems. Take out your lecture no notes so you can follow along. The employees at Mobile Sun Lotion Company roam the beaches with a tank of premium suntan lotion strapped on their backs. For a $2 charge, the employees will spray sunbathers with suntan lotion. Last year, Mobile sprayed 250,000 customers and incurred $175,000 in total variable costs and $50,000 in total fixed costs. Now to do CVP analysis, we're going to first need to determine the cost structure. When you look at this problem and what's given, you see the costs are given when uh, last year Mobile sprayed 250,000 customers and incurred $175,000 in total variable cost and $50,000 in total fixed costs. So to understand the cost structure, we'll need to first get the variable cost per unit. Last year, total variable costs were $175,000, and that was when 250,000 customers paid. So our variable cost per unit, or variable cost per customer, is $0.70. Cents. The fixed costs are given as $50,000, and that is when we look at cost structure, what we typically want to do is identify the variable cost per unit and the total fixed costs. And that's just because if you go back to the definition of these, this is how they, they make the most sense. Assuming that this activity is within the relevant range, what would Mobile's total contribution margin have been last year if only 240,000 customers were sprayed? Well, we'll recompute the sales and the variable cost to get the contribution margin. Sales would have been 240,000 customers times $2, or $480,000. Variable cost would have been 240,000 customers times 70 cents per customer, or 168,000. You can see that the variable cost would decrease from 175,000 to 168,000 if less customers are serviced. This leaves us with a contribution margin of 312,000. Now note that because both sales and variable cost are lower, the contribution margin is also lower. This entire top section of the contribution margin income statement will vary together with activity. What is the break-even point for the company? Now I will just use the equation method, it's the simplest one, and it would look like this. Sales would be 2x, sales price times activity, minus 70 cents times x, that's the total variable cost, which is dependent on activity, minus total fixed cost of $50,000, and at the break-even point, our profit is zero. So when we do our algebra, we get $1.30x is equal to $50,000 plus zero, or x equal $50,000 plus zero, divided by $1.30. The break-even point is 38,462 units, if you round, so that's 38,462 customers. Recall that when you use this equation method, ultimately you end up with the contribution margin method, which is total fixed cost plus profit divided by the contribution margin per unit, but algebraically it just comes out in the wash when you use the equation method. What is the total contribution margin at the break-even point? Determine this without preparing an income statement. Now this is here to um, show you or demonstrate what will always hold true at the break-even point. And that's that at the break-even point, your contribution margin is going to be equal to your total fixed costs. So for this company, the contribution margin will be $50,000 at break-even. 
Now this will always hold true. Obviously you could recompute the income statement, but you should come up with a contribution margin of <clears throat> What is the total contribution margin at the break-even point? Determine this without preparing an income statement. Now this question is here just to demonstrate a theoretical concept related to break-even. Because at the break-even point, your contribution margin will always equal your total fixed costs. So we can determine this without preparing an income statement. For this company at break-even, the contribution margin will be $50,000. Now you could recompute the income statement to prove this, uh, but this is just an easier way to answer that question. What effect would a decrease in the variable cost per unit to 68 cents per customer due to the break-even point and the contribution margin ratio? Now we're given numbers to work with so we can actually solve this but you should be able to conceptualize that a decrease in variable costs per unit will decrease the break-even point. Anytime costs decrease, it becomes easier to break even. But if we want to use the numbers that are given, the contribution margin per unit will now be $2 sales price minus 68 cents, our new variable cost. Contribution margin per unit will be $1.32. We can recompute that break-even point as 2x minus 68 cents x minus $50,000 equals zero. The new break-even is 37,879 customers. In our prior calculation, we had a break-even of 38,462 customers. So this proves that a decrease in variable cost decreases the break-even point. Now the contribution margin ratio will increase from 65% to 66%. We can calculate the exact increase because we were given numbers to work with. Our old contribution margin ratio, our contribution margin was $1.30, our sales price was $2, it's 65%. The new contribution margin ratio is $1.32 divided by $2, or 66%. So a change in the variable cost per unit will change the contribution margin and the contribution margin ratio. What effect would a decrease in the total fixed costs due to the break-even point and the contribution margin ratio? So we're looking at the same two things but now we're focusing on fixed costs. We are not given numbers to work with. You could make some up to solve this, but you should also just be able to conceptually identify what will happen. A decrease in fixed costs will decrease the break-even point. Again, any decrease in costs makes it easier to break even. You have to sell less units to do so. And then the second part is pretty easy. The contribution margin ratio is not affected by a change in total fixed costs since contribution margin is sales minus variable costs. And contribution margin ratio is contribution margin over sales. Fixed costs do not play a part in either of those calculations. So here we've reviewed our basic CVP analysis and evaluating the effect of, of changing variables on the break-even point and the contribution margin ratio. You should be able to analyze what happens to income, uh, the contribution margin per unit. Uh, there are various things you'd want to be able to analyze, but this problem just showed you an approach to do that.